Alright guys, it is a pleasant spring day here in the collapse of global industrial civilization here in the uh, Orwellian police state lockdown of Garfield, Texas. On this beautiful morning, I am inside, I have the surveyors here and uh, they have told me I am not allowed to step outside of my own house while they are anywhere on my over one acre property. So here we sit inside and this is Collapse Chronicles. I am Sam Mitchell. This is my little not feeling very well today co-pilot Sancho Panza doing what we do every Friday and that is going over here to mangabay.com to bring us our weekly um, Manga Bay Roundup, and this is the April 10th, 2020 edition. And so, guys, th there's just no way, no way to win anymore. So, this is supposed to be my collapse chronicle, not my corona panic chronicle. But take a wild guess. I would say one half of the stories this week on Manga Bay are about the corona panic since there is nothing else on the planet to talk about. But, you know, where at least they're being honest. They, they do a good balance here about how the corona panic has some good upsides for the planet and more and more downsides for the planet. With each passing day, more and more of these little, oh, we didn't think about that, uh, sneaking in to how the corona panic is good for this planet. Uh, that little fantasy lasted about a week, but uh, I guess their opening story, which is even, this is one of the few uh, environmental stories actually making it into the mainstream media, which I don't think has anything to do with the corona panic. <clears throat> Great Barrier Reef suffers its biggest bleaching event ever. Australia's Great Barrier Reef just experienced its third major bleaching event in the past five years, which has caused severe and widespread damage. The Australian Bureau of Meteor Meteorology recorded its highest ever sea temperature uh, this past February, which triggered the bleaching. Uh, the southern part of the reef, which had remained relatively untouched during large bleaching events in 2016 and 2017, suffered the most acute damage this time. While some corals are able to recover from bleaching, this process can take more than a decade, and scientists now fear the Great Barrier Reef will not recover. Okay, so here comes the C word already. Will the next coronavirus come from the Amazon? Many new human diseases originate from pathogens transferred from wild animals. Uh, Amazonia contains a vast number of animal species and their associated pathogens with the potential to be transferred to humans. Deforestation both brings humans into close proximity to wildlife and is associated with the consumption of bush meat from hunted animals. Amazonian deforestation is being promoted by the government of Brazil and other countries both through actions that encourage clearing and by a lack of actions to halt forest loss. The potential for releasing new diseases adds just one more impact that should make these governments rethink their policies. Oh yes. Alright, I love, uh, you know, uh, my, my one problem with 
with Manga Bay and Rhett Butler is their apocaloptimism. So, here's a classic example. <clears throat> Cattle put Paraguay's Chaco biome at high risk, but report offers hope. Cattle production is the largest driver of tropical forest loss worldwide, which is why I don't eat cows, with devastating impacts for climate, biodiversity, and people. Paraguay has one of the highest rates of deforestation in the world, largely due to the rapid expansion of cattle ranching, especially in the western Gran Chaco region, a highly biodiverse and sparsely populated forest ecosystem. Experts predict that if the current rate of expansion continues in the Chaco, the forest and other native vegetation there could disappear within decades. As Paraguay considers new global markets into which to expand, <clears throat> a new report suggests that the country has a unique opportunity to shift towards large-scale, sustainable cattle production, greatly reducing deforestation. <laughs> oh, God. Uh, and, and we thought Orwell was only alive and well with the uh, C word. Okay. Uh, was it last week or the week before where I was reading some of this uh, some of this essay written by Philip Fernside talking about uh, Brazil, <clears throat> you know, promoting uh, this new development scheme, which will pretty much open the single largest expanse of remaining undisturbed tropical rainforest on the planet to cut it in half. But the Brazilian government has responded. <clears throat> on March 9th, Magame published a commentary written by Philip Fairnside uh, about the Sola Most Sedimentary Area, an oil and gas project that would implant thousands of wells spread over the western portion of the Brazilian Amazon, a forest area almost entirely intact due to a lack of road access. According to the commentary, this project would bring many risks to the area. Oil spills, impact on isolated indigenous tribes, and deforestation due to the expansion of a road network. But now, <coughs> the Brazilian Energy Research Office has sent a rebuttal to Manga Bay, which you can find here. Uh, <coughs> the, you know, the planet eaters argue that the project's main goal is to evaluate future scenarios for a potential oil and gas exploration system in the area and is not a de facto implementation of this system. Yes, they also claim that the participatory process you know, we're letting all the uh, Indians have their say what they think about it. Of course, a lot of these Indians are uncontacted tribes. Yes, blah, blah, blah. Uh, as a rebuttal to, to uh, that rebuttal, Fairnside objects that the project is a trial balloon to see what criticisms will arise 
so that the authors of any environmental impact assessment can be more prepared to ensure approval of the licenses. Uh, yep. Uh, furthermore, Fernside emphasizes that the opening of a new frontier can stimulate the government to build more roads and attract other activities linked to deforestation like logging, land grabbing, and don't forget palm oil production. Yes. Well, speaking of palm oil, watchdogs lament palm oil giant Wilmar's exit from Forest Conservation Alliance. You know, uh, this is too uh, technical to get into. It, this is just the latest example of how these planet eaters, they're not even pretending anymore. You know, they're, they're, they're not even uh, making a sick, twisted joke uh, that they that they're sustainable or whatever. They're they're, they're just you know like this app you know this Wilmar, which nobody has heard of, one of the biggest planet eaters on the planet today, the Wilmar Corporation, just completely walking away from uh, these these absolute BS uh, corporate greenwashing. They're not even bothering with their greenwashing. Good for Wilmar. Uh, okay, what's going on in Sumatra this week? We have an indigenous plea to stop a coal road from carving up a forest. Yes. Tegul Santika, an indigenous Batin Sambilan woman in Sumatra, has called on the Indonesian government to reject a proposal by a coal mine to build a road that cuts through the Harapan forest where her community lives. Yes. Uh, a third of the 88 kilometer, about the third of a 55 mile road will slice through the middle of the forest, which is home to threatened species such as the Sumatran tiger. Uh -huh. <clears throat> the Batin Symbolon for years uh, have been trying to get together a, an initiative to restore the forest, which has already uh, <clears throat> been a logging concession and cracked down on encroachment by oil palm farmers, illegal loggers, and poachers. Okay? From that indigenous forest into Sumatra, let's go to several indigenous forests in the Brazilian Amazon. Wow! Never realized this, Mangabe. Gold mining threatens indigenous forests in the Brazilian Amazon. Uh-huh. This is one of these uh, tree hugger groups down there. Has documented more than 40 square miles of mining linked deforestation in, in the indigenous reserves of th at least three uh, tribes in Brazil whose name I'm not going to try to pronounce. Though mining is still illegal in indigenous reserves under Brazilian law, President Jair Bozo Nero has introduced a bill awaiting a vote that would allow mining, oil, and gas extraction, and other uses of these indigenous lands. Human rights groups like Survival International hold Bozo Nero and his policies responsible for the loss of forest as well as mercury pollution societal disruption and the introduction 
of diseases, you know, to these isolated tribes that result from mining. The groups say Bozo Nero's rhetoric in favor of developing the Amazon has emboldened would-be miners. All right. Gee, where have we heard this story all over the planet? Let's go look at uh, tuna fishing in Sri Lanka. In Sri Lanka, gill nets targeting tuna claim dolphin lives. This is why, well, one reason I do not eat tuna. Well, I don't eat any seafood. <clears throat> tuna fishers using gill nets in the Indian Ocean caught over four million dolphins and other cetaceans between 1950 and 2018, a new study estimates. Gill nets are a mainstay of the tuna fishery in the Indian Ocean, accounting for nearly 34% of the region's total tuna catch. Sri Lanka is home to 15 dolphin species, but just one, the spinner dolphin, accounted for more than half of the recorded cetacean, you know, bycatch in gill nets. Uh, there you go. That's what's going on in Sri Lanka. So you can think about that the next time you're eating a tuna sandwich. Uh, let's see, what next? Uh, huh, as long as we're talking about tuna fishing, report links top tuna company to forced labor and illegal fishing. A new report based on interviews with migrant fishers on three tuna fishing vessels operating out of Taiwan suggests that forced labor, can you say slavery, and illegal fishing practices continue within major tuna supply chains, despite efforts by companies and governments to stamp them out. Yes, the allegations include deception, physical violence, wage deductions, debt bondage, passport confiscation, and excessive working hours. Uh -huh. The fishers also provide evidence that the vessels took part in unlawful fishing practices such as shark finning. Yes. Uh, Two of the vessels uh, supply tuna to the Fong Chun Formosa Fishery Company and one of the world's largest tuna traders and the new owner of major U.S. canned tuna brand Bumblebee. So uh, this is Bumblebee tuna. Uh, now owned by a, by Taiwan. Okay, now uh, with all of this recent talk that pangolins may be responsible for the sea word, uh, one of many theories that it was the pangolin bushmeat trade that set off the uh, corona panic. So this is how uh, the pangolin uh, bushmeat traders are uh, responding to this. Malaysian authorities seize record six tons of African pangolin scales. On April 1st, authorities seized more than six tons of African pangolin scales in Port Klang, Malaysia. This is the single biggest shipment of pangolin scales ever to be discovered in this port. 
Yes, pangolins are the most trafficked animal in the world. Wildlife trafficking continues despite the corona panic and smugglers may actually be trying to take advantage of the lockdowns. Add that to the list. Okay, what is going on with Canada's bellow sun mining? Huh. Canadian miner Bellow Sun has 11 survey applications. I wonder if they have to stay inside their house, pending with Brazilian authorities that would directly impact two indigenous reserves and continues to survey despite ongoing legal challenges. The project, if approved, the project when approved is expected to be the single largest open-air gold mine in Latin America, extracting 74 tons of gold over 20 years in a region already heavily affected by the Belo Monte hydroelectric dam, deforestation, land speculation, and a recent escalation in violence. Alright, so you know this is so uh, pretty much the rest, I think the whole rest of the roundup this week is, uh, is corona panic news. So uh, I guess this is kind of my corona panic meets co chronicles meets collapse chronicles. So it's, you know, this is the balancing act. So first they're looking at how the corona panic has hammered seafood sales. Uh, as we're seeing a uh, declining sales of fish amid a slump in demand caused by the response to the pandemic. Restaurants and shopping malls have been shut down in most large cities across the country and well, across the planet as part of social distancing measures leading to the decline in demand for seafood. All right, uh, fish exports have uh, exports have also slowed as Indonesia, like many in other countries, has restricted its trade. So uh, give one to the planet. Uh, on this one, okay, here's another one. Uh, Score one for the planet uh, as corona panic spreads, commodity markets rumble. Projections of a construction slowdown have caused the price of lumber to plummet on global markets. And palm oil prices have dropped by 15% on lower demand for, uh, for biofuels. Uh, economists say the impact of the corona panic on the environment is hard to forecast, but they warn that the global economy could be on the brink of total collapse. The, the, uh, the global economy is on it's not on the brink, it is, it, it is in the middle of full-scale collapse. Uh, let's see. Uh, well, okay, here is a, a, an interesting story. I guess this is one uh, chalk it up to the planet eater. So you might have heard that in the Philippines, that uh, Presidente Rodrigo Duterte is literally 
gunning people down dead uh, for violating his... Duterte has the single most uh, authoritarian martial law lockdown of an entire country. Uh, but unfortunately, these planet-eating ships cannot bring, because of his directives, uh, these ships can't bring fuel to the mines. But guess what? Duterte, to the rescue, has issued a letter authorizing uh, Ocean Gold Philippines Incorporated the company that handles the mining operations to be allowed to truck in fuel for generators to run water pumps in their underground mines. A hundred Filipino police personnel assisted the entry of the mining vehicles to the site on April 6th, even as the region, meaning the people living there, remains locked down by the panic with all domestic land, sea, and air travel banned, you, you know, for Filipino citizens, are locked down in their homes, but these planet eaters are going right on about their business. Okay, and here's looking at the lockdowns in Papua New, Papua New Guinea. Uh, just a usual de debate. Uh, okay, so. How would you think the corona panic is affecting Indonesia's push to pass deregulation bills? Hmm, take a wild guess how. Lawmakers in Indonesia plan to pass a deregulation bill, meaning a rolling out the red carpet to planet eaters bill, by May, and a mining bill <clears throat> by August, prompting criticism of their timing as the country deals with corona panic. Hmm. Activists, environmental activists say it appears the Indonesian parliament wants to use the cover of the corona panic, including physical distancing measures, to rush through the legislation with minimal public oversight or pushback. Ha, uh, do you think so? The mining bill was among several pieces of legislation that failed to pass last year in the face of mass street protest, but there is no possibility now of similar demonstrations, you know, like against the planet eaters under current restrictions on social gatherings. Huh. The bills pres prescribe a raft of measures undermining environmental protections and easing the climate for miners, land developers, and commercial fishers. Are you starting to see the picture? How uh, this is just uh, one more example of how the Orwellian police state lockdowns, uh, they are using this to shut down uh, demonstrations, environmental demonstrations, climate demonstrations, whatever, that public demonstrations have been completely silenced by the Orwellian police state giving the planet eaters, these giant multi-billion dollar corporations, more license and freedom to ramp up 
business as usual destroying the planet. Uh, okay. Let's see. Uh, okay, now this one I might should have started with. So uh, yesterday, was it just yesterday in my Corona Panic rant, what I was talking about is how the, uh, the Corona Panic has shut down uh, all of the uh, all of this climate change research and climate change meetings and all of that. Wow, Corona panic disrupts, shall we say, destroys a major year for biodiversity policy and planning. The Corona panic has scrambled this year's packed schedule of international meetings and negotiations to hash out what the future will hold for Earth's ecosystems and wildlife amid a string of delayed or canceled meetings. Today, the IUCN announced that its World Conservation Congress originally scheduled for June has been postponed to January of next year. Experts worry the world will lose critical time to turn around alarming trends in biodiversity loss and climate change and that the resources allocated to fight corona <clears throat> panic might mean fewer resource, resources available for biodiversity initiatives. Given the new virus's likely origins in an animal, however, some experts hope the pandemic will motivate efforts to, uh, to address the relationship between drivers of biodiversity loss and human health. Oh, yeah. Uh, okay, I guess we have a few more that are not C-word. Wow. Palm oil gains ground in Chiapas, in Chiapas, Mexico. Mexico's Lacandone jungle has been whittled away as farmers clear more land for cattle and crops. Sources say palm oil expansion in the region is now exacerbating the threats. Do you think so? Uh, so they have, there's about 158,000 acres already been bulldozed in the Lacandone jungle for palm oil with a goal of bulldozing approximately 100,000 hectares or 250,000 acres <clears throat> is the goal. Uh, let's see, blah, blah, okay. What is the murdered environmental news of the week? Calls for justice after latest murder of indigenous leader in Brazil. Yes. Zezico Rodriguez Guajara, a teacher from uh, the Araboa Indigenous Reserve, was found shot dead on March 31st. <clears throat> he is the fifth Guajara indigenous leader to be slain since November in the lawless frontier dominated by powerful landowners and logging mafias. Uh, another indigenous leader whose name I cannot pronounce, who is himself under state protection following an earlier killing of a prominent member, told Manga Bay he felt 
particularly vulnerable in our territory. Zazico had long reportedly received death threats um, from people involved with illegal logging. Yes. Okay, we have Nigeria saving the planet. Did you have any idea that there were still 20 chimpanzees surviving uh, in Nigeria? Uh, good Lord. Uh, but Nigeria is going to save the chimpanzees. Okay. We now have the first coronavirus case uh, confirmed among indigenous people in the Brazilian Amazon. Uh, let's see. All right, one more. We're going to wind up in Peru. A third of Peru's La Papa forest cleared for illegal mining study finds. A new study reveals that nearly 5,400 hectares, otherwise known as over 13,000 acres of forest, have been converted into mining ponds in the Madre de Dios region of Peru. This is what I was reporting on 11 years ago. I was down in the Madre de Dios, the mother of God, 11 years ago when this was just cranking up. I was uh, down there reporting on this. The mining ponds have become contaminated with mercury and other chemicals in the mining process. Yes, do you think so? Here we are, 11 years later. What looked, probably when I was down there, the mother of God 11 years ago, uh, I'm guessing 300 acres of the mother of God river had been, uh, river forest had been destroyed now 13,000 acres obliterated off the planet and poisoned with mercury. Anyway, so if you enjoyed what Manga Bay had to tell you about the collapse of a planet uh, this week with or without help from the corona panic, please spend a few seconds to up thumb this video and please subscribe while you're over here. And I got to wrap up to uh, go spy on these surveyors to see how they're coming along. They're trying to figure out how much of my property is in the floodplain, how likely it is that this house is going to wash away in a flood uh, the next year because I am not able to sell the house. So here I get to sit another year hoping my house does not wash away on a Texas floodplain so I can move to my new house on a New York floodplain because I can't afford to build my new house in New York outside of the floodplain because I can't sell this house in a floodplain to build... Anyway, bye guys.